So what is neuroplasticity? If you've been in the neuro community for a while, if you've been a neuro patient for a while, if you've been around the internet, you see a lot of practitioners talking about neuroplasticity. So I was first introduced to neuroplasticity back in 2008 by a physical therapy buddy of mine uh, with a book by Norman Doidge called The Brain That Changes Itself. And it was a fascinating study about how they first discovered how the brain can actually change and access new neurological pathways. And they were using it on people with, uh, like, with disabilities, right? And then when I started getting into the research more, it really started, I really started getting into cognitive behavioral therapy, which really is where neuroplasticity started way back in the 1890s in a psychology journal. Some guy was like, I don't think our brain just stays static. I think it actually can change. Research went for like 80 more years up through the 1940s and really became very, very widely accepted in the 1970s that the brain can in fact change itself. It can reorganize its neural networks. It can recalibrate the way that it does things. It can relearn how to communicate and access different neurologic pathways when something goes wrong in a neurologic pathway that, uh, that, that we commonly use. So how does this affect people with neurologic conditions? So let's say you're having a lot of problems lifting your leg when you walk, when you go up in stairs and everything like that. So there is a major uh, neural highway, if you will, or a movement map, a movement highway that goes from your brain to your hip flexor that when I say I'm about to take a step, your brain says lift, it's processed in your brain and then it goes down to your muscles and your muscle says okay and it kicks it forward, all right? But when we have a neurologic catastrophe, a neurologic disturbance, neurologic damage in the case of MS or Parkinson's or Lyme or a brain injury, something like that, that main, that main highway that we've been using for a long time, ever since we started to learn how to walk, that is the main hip flexor highway gets damaged. And when that happens, the brain doesn't just be like, oh, well, I guess we can't hip flex anymore. No, the brain's gonna find a way. And what the cool part is, is that your central nervous system is created with a bunch of alternative neurologic pathways like, like road B and road C, kind of like frontage roads on the highway, so that when the brain is told by our conscious thoughts, I need to lift that leg so that I can walk, the brain's going to be like, okay, this is important to Coach T here, so I need to find, access, and strengthen another neurologic pathway because he's telling me that hip flexion is important. So can we restore and reestablish good hip flexor function once it's been compromised by a neurologic condition? Absolutely 100%.